Big data is one of the most talked about and most important aspects of digital transformation. But what exactly does the term mean? That's what I want to talk about here today. My name is Eric Kimberling. I'm the CEO of Third Stage Consulting. We're an independent consulting firm that helps clients throughout the world with their digital transformation journeys. And big data is something that's been talked about for years something that's very important right now and it's going to continue to be even more important for digital transformations and organizations in general in the future. With a proliferation of technologies comes a proliferation of data. And that's what I want to talk about here today is what is big data and how does it apply or how can it apply to our organization? Technology today has proliferated to all parts of our lives, not just for organizations, but for consumers and individuals as well. And with that proliferation of technology comes the proliferation of data. So now you've got multiple technologies and increasing number of technologies that are capturing an increasing high volume of data. And so organizations that are deploying new technologies and trying to make sense of the data within those technologies are now stuck with a bunch of data that they oftentimes don't know what to do with it. And it's not just data that's internal, so data like financial information, work in progress, tracking the inventory in a warehouse, things of that nature. It's also external data too. You have data coming from your suppliers, you have data coming from your customers, you have data coming from all different parts of your overall supply chain and the overall value chain from supplier all the way to customer. And so the key here is to understand what is all this data and how can we make sense of it. In addition to there being internal and external data, you also have structured and unstructured data. So structured data is something that's a little bit more tangible and measurable. So something like a financial transaction. There's a certain dollar amount or monetary value you place on that transaction, and it's fairly cut and dry. But then you also have unstructured data, things like social media interaction or comments that you're seeing in social media or emails you receive from customers that's unstructured data that isn't necessarily quantitative, but it's data that you can make use of if you have the right tool sets. Now, one last thing I'll note is that for a lot of organizations that are going through digital transformation is they find that a lot of their data resides in spreadsheets. It's very decentralized. It's at the end user local laptop level. And so that's another challenge with big data in terms of the volumes of data is not only are you looking at internal and external structured and unstructured, but you're also looking at data that is decentralized, that may not be easily accessible by the rest of the organization. So that's something else to keep in mind when you think about big data. So one of the keys to understanding big data is to understand why there's such big volumes of data and where those data reside and what types of data is out there for you to make sense of. Now, data shouldn't be something that's just sort of an accident. It's just something that falls on our plate that we have to figure out what to do with it. It can and should be something that's very strategic. It can be a competitive advantage. So organizations that make sense of all the data that's out there that are able to accurately capture and centralize this data have a competitive advantage that others don't have. And one of the ways to leverage that competitive advantage is to leverage tools like business intelligence, predictive analytics, artificial intelligence and machine learning. Those are just four examples of ways that big data can enable a competitive advantage. And the reason I mentioned these four things that I just mentioned in terms of business intelligence, analytics, artificial intelligence, and machine learning is that those are four different tools that can make sense of and create value for all the data you've collected. So for example, if you want to use artificial intelligence to try and predict future trends or try to predict consumer behavior, the best way to do that is to have good data internally and externally and consolidated in a way that the artificial intelligence algorithm can draw from that data and make sense and meaning of it. So the better your data is, the better you are at keeping the data clean and capturing that data, the better off you're going to be when it comes time to make sense of that data and to create a competitive advantage for yourself using that data. Now with these mass amounts of data and analytical tools I've talked about so far, comes the need for better processing and faster processing. So this is where just general computing power has to keep up and has been keeping up for the most part. But there are certain types of technologies that are better at processing and transacting data than others. For example, there are software vendors out there like SAP. They've created a HANA platform. It's a database and a platform 
that's designed to create faster real-time data performance, data visibility. So in other words, in the past, as an example, in the past, you used to have batches of data that would run overnight. So you'd have to wait until the next morning to see all that transaction data synced to your main systems. But with more real-time databases like SAP's HANA, just as one example, you have more real-time visibility right as the transactions are happening, and you have a way of quickly and more powerfully processing the data that's available to you. So data processing, speed, database structure, and overall architecture are some of the ways that you can ensure that you've got the right infrastructure to support your big data environment. Now, one of the other challenges of big data is the fact that many organizations, if not most, are using multiple systems to manage their operations. They might have one system for their financials, another system for their warehouse management, another for their manufacturing shop floor, another for their sales and marketing automation. All these different systems are capturing data from different sources, and architecture and integration is a key way to tie together that data. So while the data may be captured in other systems than the one you might be looking at at any given moment, there's a need to integrate those different systems so that the data can flow seamlessly throughout the organization and throughout the different systems that the organization is using. So the overall architecture and design of systems, the integration of systems and ensuring that the data is flowing back and forth between the different technologies accurately is extremely important to an effective big data environment. And it's not just the data itself, the tangible data itself that's important. It's also important to keep an eye on the human behavior. It's human behavior that ultimately can corrupt data. So if a end user goes into the system and inaccurately captures data or manipulates the data in a way that changes the real raw meaning, that's a problem that you have to deal with as well. So it's not just architecture and integration between physical systems, it's also ensuring that you have the human behavior mapped out. And one last thing I'll point out here too is the reason that cloud has become so powerful is because cloud systems are a central way to capture data with multiple applications. So let's just say you're an organization that has five core operational systems you're using for different parts of your business. If you host those systems in the cloud and you're capturing all that data in one central cloud location, suddenly it becomes easier to process and access that data for analytical purposes. So this overall bucket of architecture and integration is a key enabler of the big data movement. Now the last thing to think about as it relates to big data is data privacy and security. So we've got to be thinking about regulations throughout the world that dictate how we can and can't use data, where we can and can't store data. So as we collect more and more data, there's an increasing sensitivity throughout the world on what we do with that data and how we protect that data. So we need to make sure that we've got very tight security in place, that we are protecting the data, we're keeping and protecting people's private information, especially if you're in a highly regulated environment like healthcare or perhaps uh, government or banking, financial services. Those are examples of areas where data privacy and security is even more important. And in addition to general privacy and making sure you're protecting the data from a privacy perspective, you also wanna make sure that it's secure, that you can't access it from the outside and that your internal employees have limited access to that data and that you're not violating any security and or privacy protocols associated with that. So these are just some of the things to think about as it relates to big data. Big data is one of the biggest trends happening in the digital transformation space right now. And for more information on other types of trends that are happening in the digital transformation world, I first of all encourage you to subscribe to this YouTube channel because that's a common topic that I cover on this channel. But I also encourage you to download our annual digital transformation report. This is a report that covers digital transformation trends and best practices as well as independent software rankings and reviews for different types of technologies that might help enable your digital transformation. So I've included a link to that resource as well as other downloads and white papers and other videos that I think will be helpful to you as well. So be sure to check that out as well. So I hope you found this information useful. Hope you have a great day.